This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. This week began with multiple rumours circulating, suggesting that Italian electric motorcycle company Energica was in trouble. And by week's end, those rumours proved true. As the company published in an official statement midweek, the board of directors for the company held a meeting on the 14th of October where they agreed to enter the firm into bankruptcy judicial liquidation. Its majority shareholder, Ideanomics, has decided not to make a public comment as the bankruptcy was announced. With a truly impressive but short history, Energica wowed on the track and on the road, and as a fan of electric motorcycles, I think it was responsible for some of the very best electric motorcycles out there. I am truly gutted to hear this news, as I'm sure many of you are, but there is still hope someone will buy its assets and continue the name. Watch this space. It was the Paris Motor Show this week, and at it, there were plenty of reveals taking place. And while we do like to get B-roll for coverage, this time around, most automakers only made images available. I'm sorry. We start the Paris roundup with a new lineup from Citroen. In addition to showcasing its just launched C3, available already in multiple drivetrains, including all electric, it gave its C3 Aircross its first public debut. Like the C3, it comes in a variety of different drivetrain options, but for all electric, you'll be stuck with a five seat configuration. Then there was the C4X, which again will be offered as either a hybrid or electric, and the C5. Aircross Concept, which previews a future model for the brand with flexible drivetrain configurations. Finally, there was the global premiere of the refreshed Citroen Ami and its beach-going sibling, the Ami Buggy Vision. While only the former is currently available as a production model, it's great to see Citroen electrify so much of its lineup. Also offering a massive lineup at the Paris Motor Show was Renault, which debuted the production version of its R4 E-Tech, showcased a prototype of its next generation Twingo, and much more. The Renault R4 E-Tech is due to launch in the early part of next year and features a compact footprint hiding a deceptively large interior for its size. It will launch with a choice of 40 or 52 kilowatt hour battery packs and its design features the ridged door panels its grandparent of the same name was famous for. Also debuting alongside the production R4 E-Tech and Twingo E-Tech prototype was the Renault Duo and Bento, the spiritual successor to the iconic Renault Twizy. Unlike the Twizy, both have doors and are fully enclosed, and the Bento has a positively massive cargo space for inner city cargo fun. There's a fair bit of news coverage this week about a new story from Ford, which, if you listen to some outlets, is offering dealers up to $22,500 when they sell a Ford F-150 Lightning. As is often the case, Her Royal Highness Context is here and ready to make herself felt. And in this case, that context is that this is part of a dealer programme where Ford is rewarding dealerships who replenish their inventory with F-150 Lightnings from Ford retail replenishment centres with $1,000 in incentives per vehicle ordered. If a dealership orders more than 15, the incentives increase to $1,500 per F-150 Lightning, up to a maximum of $22,500 per dealership. The dealership doesn't have to pass that on, but it's clearly designed to reward engaged dealers who want to continue selling EVs after Ford caved to dealer pressure and ended its authorised EV dealership programme. As I noted after last week's We Robot event, there was bound to be news and coverage continuing into this week, and that's exactly what's happened. First, it's worth noting that Tesla has now apparently trademarked RoboBus and RoboTaxi, names that are different to the RoboTaxi and RoboVin that Elon Musk called them last week. It's also worth noting, however, that it's not unusual for companies to trademark terms that are adjacent to the ones they're planning on using to prevent someone else nabbing them. 
also this week, reporting from the We Robot event, confirmed that Tesla's Optimus robots weren't acting completely independently, but were in fact using humans as backup. While the walking was confirmed by multiple sources to be AI-driven, other parts of the Optimus behaviour, including verbal interactions, were carried out using telepresent functionality with a human behind a metaphorical curtain. It's important to note, though, that the ambulatory aspect of Optimus being solved by AI is impressive, but it also reiterates there's a long way to go before they're ready for mass production and sale. For the past few months, German eVTOL startup Lilium has been pursuing funding from multiple sources to help it bring its eVTOL jet to market. Earlier this year, the company warned it might have to leave Germany if it didn't get the support it needed to remain there. And for a while at least, the German government, as well as its home state of Bavaria, seemed to be interested in offering Lilium a loan guarantee to help fund its expansion. Bavaria's offer of €50 million Euro made in September, though, came with a catch that Lilium obtained an equal amount of funding from the German federal government. While the country's transport minister was open to the idea and everything looked like a done deal, a budget committee meeting this week seems to have scuppered the plan, with no federal loan agreement in sight. It's not clear what will happen next, but Lilium has stated it will leave the country if it can't get the support it says it needs to bring the Lilium jet to mass production. Aptera quietly pushed back some of its Aptera Accelerator customer delivery estimates this week from 2025 to 2026, as it tries to continue to secure funding for mass production. Aptera Accelerator program members are Aptera reservation holders who have made additional investments into the company in order to secure an early place in the production vehicle queue. And while Aptera confirmed this week that it does target production of around 60 launch edition models, models for next year, its remaining Aptera Accelerator program members, about 1,940, will likely be waiting until 2026 for their vehicles. At least they will if Aptera can secure the $60 million it says it needs to advance to low volume production. Full disclaimer, I am a reservation holder, but my order page says TBA, like many of you watching. I know this week's show isn't meant to be all bad news, but some weeks it is, and I'm afraid I have one more piece. BMW's CEO is calling for the EU to cancel its ICE vehicle sales ban, but not for the reasons you might think, at least the given reasons stated. That's because, speaking at the Paris Motor Show, Oliver Zipser said that the mood towards EVs in Europe among the industry was trending toward pessimism. He called on the EU to end it planned for a 2035 ban on all new vehicles with tailpipe emissions, stating that not doing so would make Europe overly reliant on Chinese-made battery packs, which of course right now is something of a political hot potato in its own right. Zipsa says that banning vehicles with carbon dioxide emissions will shrink the auto industry, but I'm going to leave it to you to civilly discuss in the comments below if you think that's a good or a bad thing. Staying in Europe, Transport and Environment has sent a letter to the Czech government asking it to effectively rescind its approval of private imported Tesla Cybertrucks, to the nation. Citing European legislation, the non-profit, accompanied by signatories from a half dozen other important environmental and safety-focused non-profits, states that when a private importer petitioned the Czech government to allow a Tesla Cybertruck to be imported under light-duty vehicle classifications, that importer misquoted the vehicle's weight to circumvent the EU's N1 weight test on light-duty vehicles. The latter quotes the actual vehicle's weight and notes that a Tesla Cybertruck and, I might add, other production EV pickups around the world weigh more than N1 allows and therefore cannot legally be imported as passenger vehicles. It also states that the Cybertruck would fail to meet crash tests in Europe and also posits, due to the way the US crash test system is self-certifies, questions if it actually also meets US safety standards. We will keep you posted on this one.
And to finish the segment, some good news about battery prices from Goldman Sachs, which has been tracking the price of EV battery packs for some time now. In its latest paper on EV battery prices, its automotive team states that EV battery prices are now forecast to fall to 82 US dollars per kilowatt hour of installed capacity by 2026, which, in case you're interested, is about 55% of what batteries cost just last year. It also estimates that it's a 26% drop from how much batteries have cost on average this year. It's also worth noting that EV prices did grow a little in 2022 and 2023, mostly I'm going to guess because of the impact of COVID. We could see EV battery prices as low as $65 per kilowatt hour by decade's end. That is bonkers. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new car? If you are and you're living out there, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecocity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's perfect for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, what life is like with an EV, where to charge, how to do your RUCs and so much more. So follow the link below and start your journey today. As I alluded to earlier in the show, I love riding and hearing about electric motorcycles. And one of my favourite YouTube channels to watch right now is Mark's travels on YouTube as he explores the world on a zero motorcycle called Eve. Called Eve. But in Africa, a different long distance electric motorcycle trip has just successfully completed thanks to African EV startup Rome. It's just celebrated the completion of a 6,000 kilometre trip across the continent by two riders on its newest electric motorcycle the Rome Air. But what's different about this particular trip is the entire 17-day journey relied entirely on solar-powered charging. This highlights the way that electric vehicles can operate independently of an electrical grid, regardless of how remote the area is. Not only is it an epic story of hope for the future, it's also the first solar electric motorcycle crossing of Africa. Well done, guys. And finally... I'm pretty sure that most of you know that I am a farm girl and as such, I have a soft spot for the iconic Land Rover Series 1 through 3 and of course the Land Rover Defender that built on the design after. And I'll be honest, if I had my druthers and the money, I would love to have an all-electric Land Rover, but well... That tends to be well out of my price range. But if you're looking for something that offers modern performance inside classic design, then look no further than the anti-Cybertruck, aka the all-electric Land Rover Series 109 from Zero Labs. It's just been officially announced by the company and features the iconic Land Rover design atop a new chassis containing drivetrain and battery packs. You can head to the Zero Labs site now and configure your very own, with vehicles expected to begin deliveries next year. I am in love. So if you do get one, would would you let me have a play? I know people think YouTubers are rich, but well, I'm not the best at this whole YouTube game stuff. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And while you're at it, make sure that you have switched to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It's so easy to make the switch. And if you do so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green, renewable power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual. And in the meantime, do check out the other awesome videos on this channel, including those from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. He has been testing and driving some crazy vehicles of late, and I've been watching some of the stuff he's been up to and some of the behind the scenes stuff. And I can tell you, the videos that are going to be posted, uh, they're going to rock. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of your day. Kakite. See you next time. <laughs>